Linked double crochet worked in a spiral. Let's do it. I used a little over 500 yards of Cartapu home decor, but you could use a t-shirt yarn or any stretchy yarn. Just pick a crochet hook that gives you a tight gauge, and you'll also need a stitch marker. I'm going to demonstrate the linked double crochet on a swatch so it's easy to see. With a regular double crochet, you'll yarn over to get the second loop on your hook, then you'll insert your hook into the next stitch to pull up a third loop. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's a basic double crochet, we're all familiar with that one. The difference with linked double crochet is to get that second loop on your hook, rather than yarning over, you'll insert your hook into this front bar on the previous double crochet post. Pull up a loop, then as with the regular double crochet, you'll insert your hook into the next stitch to pull up the third loop. Now you have three loops on your hook and you can make a regular double crochet. See how it's linked to the previous stitch? And you've also created another bar on the post stitch to work into. We insert our hook into that front bar, pull up a loop, insert our hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's your link double crochet. And you see we're getting a really nice tight gauge with these double crochet stitches. That's why I chose this stitch to make a poof. It creates a nice tight weave like single crochet, but it's as quick to work up as double crochet. So to begin your poof, we're going to make a magic loop by making a really loose slip knot. Just don't pull it tight. And chain one. We'll start by making three single crochets into the magic loop. This will help us build up the height of our spiral. Then make one regular double crochet. And from now on, you'll only make linked double crochets and make six linked double crochets into the magic loop. So that's seven double crochets total, including this first one we just made. So we have seven double crochets, we're not counting the first three single crochets. Tighten up that magic loop. Make it real tight. <laughs> and you can see your spiral beginning to form. But we're not done with round one yet. You'll make three more linked double crochets, one into each single crochet from the beginning. This will make for a total of 10 double crochets in round one. Now we'll need to add the stitch marker to mark the beginning of round two. Make one linked double crochet and place your marker. then make one more linked double crochet in the same stitch. For round two, you'll make two linked double crochets in each stitch of the round. And at the end, you'll have a total of 20 linked double crochets in round two. To start round three, you'll make one linked double crochet into your marked stitch. and move your marker up to mark the beginning of the round. Then make one more linked double crochet into the same stitch. You'll always work two linked double crochets in the first stitch of the round. Then you'll make one linked double crochet only in the next stitch. 
and then two linked double crochets in the stitch after that. Continue with the two one two one pattern, meaning two linked double crochets into one stitch, one linked double crochet into the next stitch, and so on, for the rest of the round. And at the end of round three, you should have 30 linked double crochets. Just like earlier, start round four by working two linked double oops, by working two linked double crochets into your marked stitch, and then move the marker up to the first stitch in the new round. The pattern for row four is two linked double crochets in the first stitch, followed by one linked double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around. Continue increasing like that. Add one single stitch between your increased stitches every round until your piece is as wide as you want your poof to be. Mine had eight single stitches between increases and was 18 inches wide. Then you'll continue working linked double crochets in a spiral but without increasing. So just one linked double crochet in every stitch. Still keep track of the beginning of your rounds with the stitch marker so both of the sides of your poof will be the same size. Oh, by the way, you gotta make two of these. <laughs> I did four rounds without increases and had a 10 inch tall poof. You can do more or fewer rounds to change the height. Don't fasten off because when we go to seam the sides together, you'll use that working yarn attached to the last stitch for the seaming. Line up your pieces with the spiral facing out. I recommend seaming your pieces about halfway first before you stuff the poof. You'll pull one of your live loops through the back loop of the first stitch of the other piece. And then just slip stitch seam the back loops of the stitches together. So work into the loop closest to you on one side and the loop furthest from you on the other side. Just slip stitch those back loops together. So once you've gotten about halfway around, put that live stitch on hold. Because now it's stuffing time! For the best result, I'd recommend buying a couple real round pillow forms, about two inch wider than your poof from like the craft store or something. But I had a bunch of old towels and stuff and I wanted to repurpose them so I found some matching pillowcases and just kind of haphazardly stuffed them with anything soft that I had around the house that wasn't like in good enough shape to donate. And granted, it's not the smoothest result, but it's my poof and I'm gonna fill it with whatever I want. So to seam up the rest, go back to your other final stitch from one of your spiral halves and work the other halfway around into the back loops just like we did on the first half. This will leave a little hole between your two final double crochets, but we'll close that up at the end. So it's getting a little crowded here on my camera, but hopefully you can see there are two live stitches and one little back loop left to work into. So I just put both of my live stitches onto my hook and worked a slip stitch into that last back loop.
Then I pulled my tail ends through to secure it and I just hid the yarn ends inside the poof. Now to close up that little hole on the other side, I just took an extra piece of yarn and laced it through some of the edge loops of the post stitches. Then I secured those ends and hid them in the poof as well. And there you have it. I hope you like this pattern and little tutorial. If you want to download a written copy of the pattern, you can find it on my blog linked below. Have fun and I'll see you next time. Bye!